Hello everybody, I am Jared Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to Relative Race, Season 7, Episode 4. Emotional one. It's gonna be an emotional one. It was a hectic, pretty crazy day earlier, and to land on the doorstep, it was awesome. There's two women standing outside the door, and wait, I'm not. That one woman looked like looked very similar to Megan. Is this gonna be Megan's family, or am I just am I just seeing things? Sure, exactly who they are, but eager to know. <laughs> I'm Megan. I'm Monica. I'm speechless. This is my I'm Grandma Marge, and I'm Michelle. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just thinking that she looks like Megan. As soon as she said that her name was Marge, I knew exactly who she was, and I couldn't wait to wrap my arms around her. When I first heard Monica's adoption story. Marge was a prominent figure. Not only did she foster her for six weeks, she also fostered Monica's biological mother as a teenager, and she handpicked Monica's adopted parents for her. Wow. You've heard about Marge. Yeah, you've heard about Marge. Her name is familiar. <laughs> mother robin came here to live when she was 16 as a foster child i heard this yes. it was way back you came here from the here? hospital yes. yes at two or three days old and that's crazy i was the one that went to des moines where you were born and picked you up from the hospital oh and brought you here that's why she's here <laughs> i'm marge flannery and i'm michelle newman and we are Monica's mother's foster family. I go by Grandma Marge, and that's what they call me because I have fostered many children. So I'm just Grandma Marge to everybody. Hmm. Sorry, I'm not biological, but it's you're okay. in my heart. I've always, <laughs> always called you my foster mom. Always. Really? Yeah, because I knew that you took care of me for a little while in between Robin, and then it was you, and then my parents now. Yeah. I was overwhelmed. I was so excited. I've been waiting for this for 32 years, and Monica got emotional about seeing me, but I was very emotional to get to see her because I've waited for this time. I thought it was cool that she knew who you were, or knew of you. I, me too. I didn't know she knew. It was more than fulfilling. I need a hug. I got to say, that's pretty cool because it really does. It, it's true. Family isn't always biological. And I, that really goes to show, even if she wasn't, you know, she wasn't part of her life for a long time, but she was a very important part. And I, I, I really love that they, they're including her as part of this. Walking up the stairs and seeing our relative, and she just was so bright and just full of love and life and joy, and it was beautiful. Hi. 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 <laughs> this is Lindsay. My, my name is Anthony, and I'm Joseph. Nice to meet you. My name is Aaliyah. So, uh, I guess the question is, how are you related to us? Um, so I am your first cousin on your mom's side. Oh my god, you guys look just like your mom. Oh my god. <laughs> You're so pretty. Thank you. I didn't, I never thought I would meet you guys. Yeah. Hugging my cousin Aaliyah for the first time was like hugging a sister that I haven't seen 
in a very long time. If home had a feeling, that would be it. I've heard about you guys, but I've never, like, I never thought I would be able to see you guys. Um, you guys' mom, Ruthie, she would tell us a lot about you, but, like, she would never really go into details. So I never thought that this was ever possible. So I'm just excited. My cousins, Joseph and Anthony, them finding us was just a dream come true. Like, I never expected this to happen. Like, so when it happened, it was just more of, like, it's real, it's it's exciting it's happening and i'm just i'm overwhelmed is her is her brother the the other cousin they met earlier who remembered them being taken away i want i wonder although i i'm i i get the feeling that sometime on this on this season they'll be meeting their mother i i just get that feeling i'm actually 25 well i'll be 25 um yeah they're like close to the same age oh really (laughs) how old are you guys 28 28. oh my goodness wow yeah we're super close wow that's so insane you look just like ruby like i can (laughs) it's so exciting back on the road teams red and black leave nothing to chance let's just run in real quick as they stop for directions. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, officer. We're trying to get to Paxton Avenue. We lucked out to find a police officer who was able to give us some turn-by-turn directions. I got it! I got it! Okay, it's really... Casey found a UPS driver, and we were like, yes. (laughs) Thank you very much, sir. Have a good day. So what is that telling us? 0.3 miles. No, 0.3 miles, so we're closer. Boy, that couldn't have been any easier. <laughs> we got it in the back. There it is, there it is, right there. Wow, they're... Good job. Team Black's relatives all live up in, like, the woods and stuff. They all have big driveways. Oh, this is a nice looking Running house. up to the cabin, I see this woman who looks a uh, lot like my aunt Lynette that we just met the other day. Hey. I'm Lynette. <laughs> Welcome to the family. <laughs> and I thought immediately that has to be one of my aunts. Hello. She looks like her. Hi, I'm Casey, and Hi. this is my husband Sean. Hi. Very nice to meet you. My name is Jen. Are you my aunt, Jen? Yes, I am. <gasps> Your dad is my brother. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to meet you. I've heard so much about you. It seems like all the women in this family have big hair, so she's fitting right in because she's got. My sister has that too, with the like thick, big kind of curly hair. You have uh, little bits and pieces. What I've been here. Yeah. I'm Jen Miller, and I am Casey's aunt. The moment that Casey walked up to me, it was really amazing how much she resembles the people in our family. She's just beautiful, vibrant young woman, and I am so excited that I got to meet her today. Karen? Yes. She gave me like a family tree on my first day, and it had her name on there. I was like, oh my gosh. We have a very big family. We have been learning (laughs) this, yes. Yeah. So, yes. I, I understand that you are a musical person. I both am. Both are, actually, yeah. Oh, you both yeah. are. Awesome. Well, we have a little surprise for you. Okay. Are these more relatives? Hello. 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 Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, wow. I was literally just so cool. saying how funny that would be. I literally just today was like, I wonder if we're going to meet, like, a musical relative. And, like, boom, there they are. This is my barbershop quartet. Hey. Um, we sing with Sweet Adelines International. It's an all-women for a cappella barbershop group. I have been singing with barbershop since I was a young girl. It was exciting to find out that Casey shared the same passion of music, and I think it really surprised her and caught her off guard. We would like to teach you a song if you would like to sing with us today. So yes. Cool. yes. Please, awesome. please, 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 please. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go right over here, and we okay. can do a little singing. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Go ahead. Is it going to be Devin's family today? Hi, Hi. how are you? Hi. How are you doing? I'm, I'm Devin. I'm Liz. I'm Jennifer, and this is Tamaya, my daughter. Okay. Hi. Nice to meet you. So whose relative are you? Okay, guess. Devin's. Uh, Devin's. I'm going to guess you're mine. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Who are you? I'm your first cousin. Okay. My dad is Michael. That's your uncle. Ooh. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Awesome. Michael. Because 
Michael has a junior, right? If I remember the chart correctly. Okay. Your okay, twin. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay, cool. My name is Jennifer Thomas. I'm Devin's first cousin. My first thought looking at Devin today was like, oh, he looks just like us. <laughs> Especially my older brother, Michael. He looks so much like my brother. The okay. eyes. Okay. He's 41. But y'all look like twins. Wow. All thing is, he has big ears and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> he, he can keep those big ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but y'all look exactly like That's cool. Oh, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you as well. Too. Michael, I look forward to hopefully meeting him someday soon and taking that side by side picture. Yes. So now I get to share with you why and how you came to this house 32 years ago. I've been waiting my whole life to know these answers and to ask these questions and to come in here and talk to Marge and Michelle and answer some of those questions was really, really helpful. Throughout this, we were close to Robin, your mom. We always stayed close yeah, okay. because we were teenagers together. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. She wanted you to stay with mom mm -hmm. in the interim. Right. And so my husband, Rich, and I drove mm -hmm. and we met your mom and dad in the parking lot. And like, at right. the hospital. And I have to say, it was probably one of the hardest things that I ever was part of to take you from her, or she gave me to you. Like, literally handed? Handed you over <laughs> in the car seat. And of course, she cried, we cried. It was very difficult. And then we drove back here with you late at night to Fort Dodge. I brought and you here. Me. And she was ready for you. I was ready for you. <sighs> And I think Robin was very devastated at that time. She was. Very hurt, but I was just going to support her because she was part of our family. But the deal when Robin had you come, she trusted me and therefore I was given the task of finding you a mom and a dad. I totally picked her mom and dad alone. Michelle Art. I became friends with Michelle, your mom and then discovering they couldn't have any children. Yeah. It was just like you, I didn't even have to think twice. Yeah. So it all fell together. It just, like it was supposed to be. It was to supposed be. to be that way. Yeah. Dad just told me that they would be good parents and I just prayed <laughs> that you had a great home. I did. I'm Art Bergman. And I'm Michelle Bergman. And we are very honored to be Monica's adoptive parents. The first time we saw Monica at Marge's house, uh, it just was like a peacefulness. Um, and I, we held her and it was the most beautiful moment. And I just, we just felt so much love. It was a beautiful day today, so I decided to take my cousins Anthony and Joseph out for a talk. How did you handle not knowing where your, you know, family are, like us not being there. And how did you cope with that? It was difficult a little bit because it was always something that was like missing. It was like, this is something's not right. I had so many big questions in my head, like, do they know their family? Are they living a good life? I pray that, you know, you guys have everything that you guys need. That was always the one thing that I was always worried about. It's, it's she, incredible. She looks like them. There's a, there's definitely a similarity to, to between her and and both of them. We're moving to hear that. I didn't know that y'all knew about us. Like, yeah, we knew. It was hard because like we knew that you guys were out here, and it's like what we didn't. We, we never had the money to like find you guys to even look, search. We didn't even know where to start. It's it's definitely a miracle. It's something that never was expected. I never thought that this would happen. I just thought it, it just would be ever a mystery that would never be solved. And I always told myself if I ever became a millionaire or anything like that, I'd definitely find him. We said that. It's a dream come true, I swear it is. I see somebody that um, wants to be loved equally. And somebody who's not um, looked at as the weaker link. Somebody who can do just as much as his brother can do. I feel like you are stronger than what you, what everybody sees. This is coming from my heart. It's not a script, I promise you. It's really how I feel. I feel like people don't really want to look me in the eye. It's really comforting 
really, really comforting to hear you say that because I haven't ha really had anybody that did what you just did, look me in the eye for an extended period of time and to be able to instantly see, I mean, you read me like a book. I, I just, I just want to give you a hug. <laughs> Okay, Monica, I have one more little surprise for you, so you just hang tight. Okay. It's gonna be like a picture. <laughs> oh, is that her baby bassinet? This is the baby bed you slept in, and the bed was right here the whole time. It was so sweet that Marja kept the very bassinet that Monica slept in as a baby. I'm just, I'm just, this is just so crazy that this is like where I actually was when I was a baby and I slept right here and you were the one that took care of me in this house. It's just, I don't know, it's a lot. It is. And while we're here, <laughs> I have a couple things I want to share with you. Okay. I could be your first picture of your mom at 16. Is that the first time she's seen her mom? She's so pretty. Yeah. Marge shows me a photo of my mom when she was 16 in this very house. It's been a really, really good day. That's your mom. <laughs> I can tell. That's right. You can tell. Okay. Her mouth looks like mine. Yes. Yes. That's your mom. Break down these walls and tell me that you Definitely looks a lot like her. Back in Lancaster, Ohio, Casey Singing joins time. her Aunt Jennifer's barbershop quartet for some musical fun that runs in the family. We're part of an organization called Sweet Adelines International. It's women's barbershops, so we would love to teach you a song. So yeah. you were telling me that you've been doing some singing? Yeah, um, when I was in high school, we would break into quartets and we'd perform for people. Like, they'd pay money and we'd go and sing. Acapella? Yeah, acapella. So you've done barbershop? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God. Yeah, this is like my jam, you guys. Ah, finally someone in my family that gets it. <laughs> <laughs> it was great to get to sing a song with Casey, which was a really cool opportunity. And so it's really cool to have that connection with her. And I mean, she's really, really good at singing. And so it was just really fun to sing and perform with people that want to perform with you. Your heart becomes really like warm. I don't know how else to describe it, but I felt very like warm and loved at that moment. I didn't even know until a couple of days ago that there could be up to nine people that could potentially be my biological father. That's a thought that had never crossed my mind before. Yeah, but I think they had narrowed it down by birth, or at least as soon, you know, it's always hard to tell, but you know, about what, what you'd assume. Hey, Devin, I know Angie, yep. Petra gave you this layout of our family. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of y'all. Yes. <laughs> as we looked at the chart today, I had to rule out who could be his dad. So, okay, this is my dad here, Michael Thomas, mm -hmm. and here's Johnny. Mm -hmm. I know when they tested my DNA, I know for sure if my dad is not his dad. So I have some idea who I think it is because he has a resemblance of two of them, Uncle Terry and Uncle Herbert. These are the ones that are still around. So, and I ask him, who do you think you resemble me the most? That's a hard question. I can honestly say that never in my wildest dreams would I have thought that I had that much family out there just from my biological father's side of the family. It really made me appreciate my father that raised me and the adopted family I have. I, I just needed an emotional time out. Time to take a walk.
then work two jobs for another 30 years to take care of not just us, but then his own two biological children. When I was ready to go play football, <laughs> he didn't have enough money for it. for an extra car so my dad got on a bus every day to go to work gave me his car so I can go to school go to practice and that's how I got my scholarship to go to college without my dad I'd be the dad of a jail period I'm eternally indebted to my parents that raised me. I don't know who I'd be or where I'd be without them. For him, this journey would really be about having a better understanding of who you are. But he also knows how much I care about family in general. And so he knows how much knowing that information even if it's just because of the pieces of the puzzle I'm, I'm sure he would understand exactly why we're on this journey after a long day of racing the results have been tallied and our teams nervously wait to discover how they have placed. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. I just, I know, I'm confident that we won't get a strike today. Team Black got the penalty, so hopefully that helps us avoid a strike. If we and that penalty really messed with Team Black. So I'm guessing Team Black gets the strike. And I gotta give it up to Team Green. I think they're gonna get the hat trick. I think they're gonna get three days in a row winning. We get a strike tonight because we did, you know, struggle in the challenge. Yeah. I definitely could see being what breaks it for us. I want to be the triple threat. I don't want three wins in a row. I don't want the target on our backs. I would <laughs> happily settle for second or third. That doesn't work for me, okay? I want first. Welcome, teams. Here we are now, four days into the race. So that brings us to the most important part of each and every day. Family. Who did you meet today? Today, I had the opportunity to meet my Aunt Jen. Hi. Hi. This is my cousin, Jennifer. Hi. Hi, Jennifer. Today, we met our, our cousin on our mother's side, Aaliyah. On your mother's side? Yes. <laughs> well, not to be forgotten, Team Green. So this is Marge, and this is her daughter, Michelle. Marge here has actually fostered hundreds of kids, and uh, my biological mother was actually one of them, and I was actually one of them up until I was six weeks old. And she was actually the one that picked out my adoptive parents. So without her, I would have a total different trajectory on life. So I'm really, really thankful to you. It's been great. <laughs> wow. It's the power of road race. It's the love and power of family. <laughs> Doesn't always have to be blood. <laughs> It's time, once again. Who came closest to their allotted time and who earned the strike? Well, the prize that's on the line today is for the winning team to find out where they are headed. I love this prize. I right love here, this prize. Right now. And that means you get to do a little extra planning. So, finishing in first place and winning that advantage, only six minutes over their allotted time 
three days in a row. Man, you guys just roll that roller coaster ride. You ride that up and down and back and forth. And congratulations to the twins. You finished Team Blue today. Six minutes. Over nice. Time. Would you like to know where you're headed tomorrow? Yeah. I was not expecting that. I really was expecting Team Green just because the way that it looked, it seemed like they knocked it out the park with the challenge again. But the boys did really well with the challenge, too. <laughs> You're headed to Kissimmee, Florida. Oh, oh Orlando. Okay. Oh, so, they're going from... Co so they're... It showed... I thought they were in Melbourne, but it said Coco, so I assume Coco Beach, Florida, which is basically right there. They're basically just staying in the same, going to the other side of, uh, of Orlando. Good luck in strategizing and planning. Finishing in second place, 11 minutes over their allotted time. Team Good Green. time to have basketball because you played it in high school and you crushed it. Team Green. Team Green, you finished in second place, 11 minutes over your allotted time. It comes down to Team Red and Team Black. This is an unfamiliar position for Team Black. Yep. You've always been in second place. You've never had to worry. But today, Team Green penalized you. Yep. Was it enough to give you your first strike? Yeah. Or was Team Red's frustration with all things from the challenge, does that give them their second strike? Finishing in third place, 26 minutes over their allotted time, Team Red. Team Red. All right. Team Black, you finished one minute behind Team Red. Level playing field, but one minute difference. Wow. 27 minutes over your allotted time. But wow. the bottom line is, Team Black, you picked up your first strike of roller race. You know, the, it took them like 28, 30, 29, 30 tries or however long it was to get it in. So I bet anything, if they had not had that penalty, that they probably would have hit second again. <laughs> they would have had another day of second. Maybe hit first. I'm mad at Team Green right now. Feels good that our strategy paid off and Black Team got the strike. We couldn't let them roll into day five without one when everybody else has one. So we're coming after them. They're going down. All four teams have one strike four days into the race, which means the competition is still very much up for grabs. And each and every one of you has more opportunities to meet family. And that's what this is all about. Tomorrow is the halfway point of relative race. We're not friends till the show's over. That doesn't really make a difference, unfortunately. Sure yeah, it does. You know what it nice means? Guy. We're going to beat them tomorrow. See? But you know who they're coming for. I know who they're coming for. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to get first, and we're going to make sure that they get last somehow. I don't know how, but we're going to figure it out. Weird. You better be careful, green team. Ooh, war paint. We're coming after you. On. All right, another great episode. So, uh, a little surprising that Green didn't get get the hat trick, but loving that Blue won it. Um, you know, just another great episode as usual. Really loving the fact that they had a foster mother on here for for Monica from Team Green because it really is true. Family isn't always blood, and I know there are a lot of people in my past that when I got into the genealogy, even though they're not biologically related. There are people that I am extremely interested in. I was extremely interested in connecting with uh, my best friend from when I was a little kid in L.A. Langston. I found him and connected with him. Um, my nanny from when I was in L.A. For those who don't know, my first language was actually Spanish because in L.A. my my dad worked selling window blinds and working as a stand up comedian, and my mom had a toy store in L.A. called Toy to the World, which if anyone lives in L.A. and you know of Toy to the World that was in Granada Hills from 87 to 92, I think, maybe 93, comment down below. I would love to hear that. But because both of them worked, we had a nanny who was from Guatemala, and all I know her as is Becky, Rebecca. We don't quite know her last name. I asked my parents and they said, oh, Fernandez, Hernandez, something like that. But 
she watched me until I was two, maybe? You know, from when I was born, she watched my sister, was there when I was born, and then watched me for the first few years of my life. And I think the last time I saw her was when I had gone out to L.A. when I was maybe a teenager at some point. And I had ne- I've never seen her since. And I know I would love to connect with her, you know. I would love to. So especially because that's where I, th- I learned Spanish. Spanish was my first language because that's what my nanny spoke. So anyway, I, I just... Today was a great episode. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I do hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. Also, be sure to click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It is completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.